most athletes dream of scoring the game winner of a match and taking their team to the championship title. However, the defense also has a great impact in matches, as their objective is to not concede any goals. Doesn't matter how many goals I score in the offensive, if, if the defense is conceding as many or more goals than the offensive is scoring, the team will definitely lose. Even further, many people believe that what actually win tournaments and leagues is the defense, not as much the offense. As Man United legend Sir Alex Ferguson would say, the attack wins matches, but the defense wins championships. And in this video, we'll give you some tips on how to better individually defend opponents and improve your game or your play, player's game. What's up guys, Coach Tiago here. Welcome to our channel. The subject here is always futsal. And if the, the sport is important to you, and you want to know more about it, why don't you leave us a like below, subscribe to our channel, and hit the notification bell to be notified when we publish new content to the channel. An ideal defense is the one that can neutralize an opponent's attack without committing a foul. When analyzing what defense is, we have to consider that the attack is the one taking the action, and the defense is reacting. So a good defense must be able to decrease the attacker's advantage. Defensive actions performed by a futsal team are used with the object of regaining the possession of the ball, avoiding an attack, and protecting their own goal. All these actions must be performed with great technique and precision, as a single wrong movement can compromise the outcome of a game. So let's check out these tips. Well, in this first situation here, we're going to be discussing the situation in the game is very common. It's a one-on-one -on -one defensive, and the player is coming on a counter-attack on high speed. All right, so the player right now is dead, it's stopped, but in this situation, it's going to be moving towards me. As a defender, I'm trying to be as efficient as I can be and slow down that player in order for my teammates to come back. I just don't want to attack and get dribble, or otherwise I won't have anybody behind. Remember, the offensive player is the one that have the action, the one that taking the action. I'm the one reacting. So for me, my reaction has to be very efficient, and so for me to have a successful defensive. All right? So I'm gonna give you some tips here. The first one, the player is on the side here like he is. I cannot be with my feet flat. All right? That's very bad if I'm defending, especially with younger kids. They don't understand this. We have to make sure they what? They're sideways, defending, all right? If you're on this side, left foot in the front. If I'm on the opposite side, right foot in the front. Why? In this situation here, the goal is on that side. I want to force the player to go what? To my side, to the outside. If I stay in the middle flat, or if I put my right foot in the front, what am I giving the player? The option to go to go. That's bad, we don't want that. So we have to force the players to do what? Immediately, go flat, left foot in the front, and forcing the player to go to the side. Once the player goes to the side, I'm long. I have an advantage over that player. Another thing, if I'm standing sideways, I cannot be given the space there. If I give too much space, I'm sideways like this, but I'm still giving. If it takes a touch for me, it's even harder than if I'm flat, because now I have to change my whole body to follow that player. So what I have to do instead, I'm locking the middle here. Right in front of the goal, I cannot be too much. If I'm too much, what I'm giving, the player a shot or the way to go on the side. I don't want to do that. I want to close the middle and force the player to go to the side. My knees, they have to be flexed, all right? You cannot be standing, I cannot be defending like this here, all right? If I'm defending like this, I'm probably not going to be as success successful as if I'm bending my knees wide. It's flexed, I'm giving an explosion. If I'm down here, as he's taking a touch, I can explode myself and follow that player. Whatever he goes, I'm bending my knees to try to explode. Remember, we're reacting. We have to be ready. Whatever happens, you have to get as fast as you can to defend that ball. The other thing we have to do, if that player, if I'm defending, that player is coming on a high speed, go back sense. If he's coming on a high speed, if I'm just going at him without stopping, what's gonna happen? If he takes a touch and dribbles me, there's nothing else I can do. All right, so we have to make sure the players understand or yourself understand that once you're going towards the player, no one on one, nobody's behind, I have to do it. Once I get close, I have to stop. Now I'm trying to slow down this player as much as I can in order for my teammates to get back. If I keep coming back, keep coming back, and I see I'm getting too close to the goal, to the six, 
We got what? What do I have to do? I have to take an action, all right? I have to force that player to lose the possession or to take the ball to the side. I cannot get it, let it be too close to the goal. That has to be very effective for you to understand. But you have to use up checking your shoulders or somebody else telling you you have to do. Remember that, you're just trying to slow down the player because it's a kind of attacking situation, all right? You know, the player's not that. It's just you against the player and there's nobody behind it. So it's very important for you to understand these tips to make this more effective and advantageous for you. Uh, in this second situation, is it still a 1v1 defensive, but instead of a player coming on a counter-attack, the player is standing still. Most likely in this situation, it's when all the other players, all his teammates and my, the, my teammates are behind our line, and I'm the first one here. A couple important things for you to realize. The distance that I am for that player. I don't want to be too close defending that player. If I'm too close, what's happening? I'm giving too easy for him the metal or the size to dribble, right? Very important for you to understand. A good tip for you when you're defending. If we're taking a distance, you don't want to attack that player. What you can do to realize what he's gonna do is to look into the player's eyes. Right? Most people have never heard of this before. It's very important for you to see it. You can't not know what's behind you because you can't be checking your shoulders. If I'm defending, if I decide to check my shoulders, I'm giving the player the space. If the player is smart, then I'm going. If he's smart enough to take that action when I'm not looking at it, He's beating me, right? So what I have to do to either block what he's trying to do or most likely try to intercept the pass, I'm looking to his eyes. I can see if he's looking to the side, what I'm gonna do, all right? Once he's trying to take a pass, you already know most likely what he's probably gonna do. Of course, not every time he's gonna do the same. Some players, they fake, they're gonna do that and they don't actually do whatever. But ideally, that's your only way to help you is to look at the player's eyes to see what that player is looking at, to try to understand what is processing, what is he planning on doing. And another thing, if you're defending here, if I'm just with my legs straight up, what's happening? I'm giving space. I'm trying to increase my space here to defend as much as I can. If I'm like this, for me it's hard to react. So I'm opening my legs, but the ball can go through my legs here. Or the ball can go there. If I want to intercept the pass, what do I will do if I'm defending? As the player is ready to take an action, I'll go down and I'll try to do this here. You can just like go do it because I'm freezing the space here. All right, from that point, if the player try to come here, I'm intercept from this side. The ball doesn't go through my legs most likely and it doesn't come here because it's gonna hit my foot. The same thing it happens a lot on the side. If you're on this side here, immediately as I'm doing this, I block this side here or pass. I'm over here. If he try to come here, this foot is intercepting. This is either for tackling that player or also for intercepting a pass. You can use that. That's, these two tips are very important when you're defending on one-on-one. -on -one. When the player is bad. Now let's say, for instance, that player, they can't do anything, so the player turns and starts shielding. If I'm a defender, if I'm just doing this behind that player, most likely, if you play against two players, you're not gonna be able to get the ball from that player. Very unlikely. Foot's out here, the player has a control on his foot, so there's nothing I can do to take the ball from him. And remember, the good defense is the one that you're effective defending without committing a foul. So I would try to do instead, as a shielding, I would try to do what? Step back, give him the space. Once that player turns, then I would try to take the ball from that player. Right? But you don't have to force that player shielding. Don't even worry. When I'm playing, when I see some of my top players playing, what I do, they come close. Instead of doing that, they just give one step, let the player face them. Then you have advantage. Because the players turn, there's nothing you can do. They can do nothing. And you can do nothing. Most likely what they're gonna be able to do is to use your body, all right? The same thing if you're a fixo, you're playing against a pivot. Let's say Sebas is the pivot here. He's receiving a pass. Let's say receiving a pass. Come here in front of me. He's receiving a pass. He's there. Sometimes what fixos try to do is what? To close that player. There are some pivots, they are really good in turning, using the opponent's body to help you. If you play against a really top people, that's good. That player is gonna hold the ball, he's gonna use the hands and he's gonna know where you are. It's too easy to turn on you. In this third situation here, I'm gonna give you some tips, is in a situation where your team's defending, but yourself, you're not, you don't have the ball because you are the defensive. You are not defending someone that has the ball, but instead you're defending someone who doesn't have the ball. So now we have an extra player on the side here. We would have one defender here, I'll be the second one. Very important, if I'm a defender, I have my teammate that defending that player. My body posture is very important here for me not to concede any splits, all right? I don't want the ball to go through the metal. If I just step flat, for me, if the ball goes there, it's harder for me to, to turn. What I'm trying to do instead, 
the same thing. I'm not doing this now. I'm not doing this because if I'm, my left foot is in the front. If you pass, it's harder for me to react. If I was defending here, this player, then I'll try to do what? Force the player out. But I'm not this player now. This player is here. I'm the second player, most likely the ally that's next to that player. My posture is the opposite. My right foot is in the front because I'm getting ready for what? To defend that player. And at the same time, I don't want this place to come here. All right, so it's very important for you to realize and especially talk to your little kids. Instead of just be flat, looking at the player and looking at the ball here, I'm doing what? I have to be worried about the ball and the player, all right? Dangerous is that player. I'm helping that player to cover, but my, my, my objective is to defend that player. So I'm bending down, forcing the middle. Once that pass goes there, then I can stop. And the same thing. Now my right foot is in the front. I'm forcing that player there. Now if I'm here, the same would do my teammate. He would drop the same, and then you have to do what? If there's a defender there, I'm an ally. I'm doing the same. Left foot in the front, facing that player, and facing the ball, so I can see it. I don't want to do this. As soon as I do this, at the slightest moment, that player is smart, that ball goes through, for me it's harder, all right? So it's very important for you to teach the players or for yourself to understand that position that is the most effective for you when you're defending. Remember, there's no secret recipe for a perfect defense. Each player has their own preferences and these tips are just to give another perspective and idea how to improve their individual defense. I hope they're useful to you or to your club and I'll catch you guys in the next video.